What's up, what's up? What's happening? We are back for day two. Two dose. Of what? Big Jesus Experience. Woo! Thank y'all for tuning in to BJE. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so day one was pretty tight. It was fine. Yeah. My opinion. Uh-huh. I hope y'all tuned in. If you didn't, you can go back to the clip. Yeah, you can um, go back. Yeah, and you Should can watch it. Mm -hmm. um, but today is going to be awesome. We have two more students bringing sessions. Um, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Should Yesterday cool. was cool. Today's going to be cool. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the final stretch, y'all. Um, so tune in to the rest of this. Um, you're going to be blessed by it. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you to our epic broadcast. We're so excited that you're here. You want to stand up on your feet?
everybody, it's your girl Izzy. Welcome to day two of the Big Jesus Experience. You already know what I'm saying. We saw y'all yesterday. And if we didn't see y'all yesterday, go ahead and check it out on our Epic Student Ministries page. It's on YouTube. We got it recording. We got some icebreakers. We got some nice sessions. We, you know what I'm saying? Go check it out. Go check it out. Oh, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? We're going to have our little sessions. You know what I'm saying? We're about to get there. Feel me? So, our first session, we have Zaria Samuel. She's going to come through and tell us what it's like to be a student leader. As a student leader myself, yeah, I kind of know what it's like. But she knows a lot more about it because she's leading in her school. She's living it out. She's doing what she got to do. So, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Go learn from her for a minute. So, I will catch y'all when y'all get back. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zaria Samuel and I am a student leader right here at Epic and today I'm coming at you with a session on student leadership. So the main things we're going to be talking about today is what is leadership? How do you lead? Then we're going to be talking about silent leadership. And then finally we're going to end off with the cost and reward of leadership. So I just want to start off with the Bible scripture that kind of relates and intertwines all the messages. It's Acts 20, verse 28. It says, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which is obtained with his own blood. So you're probably thinking, Zaria, what does that mean? So I'm all about keeping it practical. So let's break it down. So take care of yourself. So whether that's self-care or even taking time for yourself, just so you can be the best you can be for other people and to all the flock. Well, let's replace the word flock with others or your friends, your family, maybe your team, your sports team, or student council if you do student council in school, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. So you are made a leader by the Holy Spirit through God. You were called to lead in your own way with your own strength. And then to care for the church of God. We should care for the church of God and take care of his temple but not just inside of church, not just the church itself, but also outside of church. So that may be your school, your home, and just care for it. Make sure you keep it clean, keep it neat, and even just the energy and the vibe that it brings, which he obtained with his own blood. Jesus died on the cross for you to be a leader. He wants you to lead the way he did, and he led primarily by example. So let's hop right in. What is leadership? There are four main aspects of leadership. Communication, cooperation, motivation, and feedback. So let's talk about communication. You cannot do anything without talking to other people and communicating, whether that's with another team, so the people inside your team. For example, in Epic, when we're planning events, We have to communicate with each other, and then we might delegate, like, okay, this is what we're doing for games, this is what we're doing for sessions. Or if it's an individual project, the communication is between you and God. You want to ask God, hey, what am I supposed to be doing, and how can I use this to better myself, better other people, and shine bright for you? Guys, listen, with communication, don't be afraid to ask questions and clarify. Because nine times out of ten, Somebody else has the exact same question. It's better to over-ask than under-ask and be confused because then you can't really deliver. So communicate with the people within your circle, within your realm, and even sometimes outside of projects. It's good to communicate with maybe your parents. Like, hey, mom and dad, this is really confusing me. We're not sure what we need to do. What do you think? Ask for feedback. And next, it's cooperation. Working with other people is super, super, super important. And you have to be able to work with all types of people, even sometimes the people who are more difficult to work with. So it's cool, like, if you have somebody who's kind of difficult to work with, then think about what they can contribute to the project. It might be their strengths, they're really good at editing, or they are a good public speaker. speaker. So when you're working with anybody, use each other's strengths. Don't focus on what they can't do or what they might not be good at because in a group, everybody has something that they're really good at that might make up for what someone else needs improvement upon. So use each other's strengths. And even ask, going back to communication, ask, hey, what do you like doing? What do you think you're good at? And use that to improve the project because two brains are better than one. 
Number three, motivation. It's so important to motivate those within your team. And you know, I'm a cheerleader, so sometimes my motivation is like, oh my gosh, we've got it, guys, let's do it, let's do it, let's get it, let's get it, woo, woo, woo. But that's not everybody's cup of tea. Sometimes motivation is that on the side, quiet, hey, you're doing really, really good. Hey, keep it up, it's going awesome. Or maybe it's just you look at somebody and thumbs up. But motivation keeps your team going. It keeps everybody at the top of their game and it helps them feel like they're appreciated because everybody wants to feel like they're contributing and everybody wants to feel appreciated within the project. And that leads me to the fourth and final one, feedback. In my opinion, this is one of the most important aspects. You guys need to communicate with each other and give each other feedback so that you can approve because one part of leadership is moving forward and helping your team move forward. So with feedback, constructive criticism is super important, but don't just criticize. It has to be constructive. So when you do give feedback, acknowledge something that they did well, and then tell them what, hey, maybe this needs to be improved on. But don't just complain, give a suggestion. So it might go like, hey, I really like that you decorated these slides on Google Slides and it looks really cool but I think the format should be improved upon. What if instead of doing full sentences, we do bullet points to get straight to the point? So that's just one example. But sometimes with leadership, like communication within, you're not that type of person that's like bold out there like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. And that's okay because you can be a silent leader. Leading silently is you lead by example or you lead behind the scenes. That is just as important as someone who's in the spotlight because realistically, not everybody is called to be in front of the camera, in front of the public eye. But leading behind the scenes is super, super important. So think about it this way. Somebody is always watching whether you think they are or not. So when you do always, when you always do what you're supposed to do, then you don't have to worry about it. And you are going to mess up sometimes. You are going to make mistakes. But the important part about that is that you learn from them you improve and that you say, oh, this is what I messed up that time. Let me be better for next time. And the cool thing about leadership is that you can always gain something from it. But anytime you gain something, you also have to give something. So that brings me to the cost and reward of leadership. The cost, it takes time, it takes focus, and it takes energy. So you have to make sure that you're replenished and that you're at the top of your game so that when you need others, when others need to lean on you, that you have something to give. But the reward of leadership, it may be small sometimes and you may not see it as quickly, but I promise you it is there. Maybe you've learned a new skill, something you didn't know before, like going back to that Google Slides example. Maybe you didn't know how to change the background on Google Slides or animate it, but now you know. Well, you just gained a reward. You gained a new skill that you can use for next time and improve upon. So here I have an example. We have you, we have others, so other people like your team or your group of peers or your sports team, and then we have self-care. So inside, this red liquid is the hope that you carry inside, the light that you carry, your energy, your time, your focus. And so you have others. You see, it's kind of low in your team. So maybe you want to give a little motivation. Your friend says, hey, I'm really not feeling it today. Like, I kind of want to stay home. But you're like, hey, come to school. It's going to be great. I'll stick with you. We can eat lunch together. We can do something fun. So you do that, and you add a little bit to their cup. Great, right? Now, maybe your sibling is like, oh, my gosh, I had the hardest day today. So you stop your homework. You stop what you were doing. And you're like, tell me about it. I want to know. So now you're giving a little bit to your sibling. And maybe your parents just got back from work. And they're like, hey, I need you to clean up. I need you to do the dishes. And you're like, cool, no problem. You work super, super hard. This is the least I can do for you. You do so much for me. So you give them a little more of your time and energy. Now on your sports team, someone just really needs to pick me up. You want to tell somebody, hey, you're doing great, you're doing awesome, just maybe you should improve upon this. For example, I'm a cheerleader, so we do a lot of tumbling. So maybe it's, hey, try slinging a little lower, try jumping a little more. So then you give more of yourself. Well, now, somebody else needs your help. Your best friend comes to you, 
her boyfriend just broke up with her. She's super sad and she's like, I really, really, really need your help. You're like, okay, cool. You have nothing to give. You can't give your best if there's nothing there. And sometimes when you try to give what you don't have, you hurt more than you help. So you're probably thinking, well, how do I combat this? Because I don't want to hurt people, I want to help people. It's so important that you take time for yourself and do what you like to do. So for me, I love bullet journaling. Anything creative with art, I love bullet journaling. So maybe I take like five to 10 minutes and just pause and like, hey, I'm gonna open my bullet journal, draw a little picture, do a little something. You add to your cup. Okay. And then maybe you're like, oh, I love this show on Netflix, whether it's Riverdale, Outer Banks, whatever you like. And you're like, I'm just gonna take a minute, watch one episode. You add to your cup. So you do all these things and you're enjoying yourself. So now your cup is full. And when somebody else needs something, you can help them and fill their cup up even more and still have some left over for yourself because it's two ways. You want them to be able to be like, well, do you need encouragement? So you want them to give to you. So now you guys are equal. And when you need to lean on each other, you can go back and forth because both of your cups are filled up. So remember, when your cup isn't full, you hurt. When it is, you can help. So let's talk about this. Leadership is a very tricky thing, especially when you're a student and you have a lot going on. So it's so important to figure out what type of leader are you? Are you a silent leader that wants to help behind the scenes? Or are you more out in the open, more in the public eye? You wanna lead more people, maybe that's you. And then think about how can you improve on the four aspects of leadership? Communication, cooperation, motivation, and feedback. And finally, take care of yourself. Did you notice in the scripture we did, God says, take care of yourself first and then the flock? Because when you take care of yourself, you are the best you can be, and then you can help others be the best that they can be. And lean on God. Don't be afraid to ask God for help, because sometimes we just need a little pick-me-up. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me for my session. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Zaria Sama. I'm a student leader here at Epic, and I care about you guys. Do better. Be the best you can be. Bye, guys. Wow. Woo! That was awesome. Fine. Being a student leader, homegirl has a lot on her plate. Yeah, a lot. And she still manages to do it all, blends it well. Wow. That's that's dope. Yeah, it that is. That was real. That was real good. That was real, real good. Real, real good. So what are we doing right now? We are about to get to the offering. Get to the offering. Um, so there's ways on the screen that you can give, um, but I want to give y'all a scripture uh it's luke 6 and 38 and it says give and you will receive your gift will return to you in full press down shaking together to make room running over pouring into your lap the amount you give will determine the amount you get back so basically that's saying give and it will be given unto you good measure press down shaking together will men other people give to you that's basically saying you give to God, you'll be blessed enough that other people want to bless you. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you haven't already given, you can text to give or other ways to give. Sure. Yep. Thank you so much, Zaria, for that wonderful session. We really enjoyed it. That was really, that was some good nuggets, some good tokens, you feel me? We're going to use that forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for that. So with that being said, we're going to go into our next session. And Andrea is going to tell us what it's like to be, you know what I'm saying, with the power of prayer and the power of worship. You know what I'm saying? How it means to uh, sing for God and what it means to pray to God. You feel me? So y'all going to go to her real quick and she going to shape y'all up. Okay? Hi, guys. My name is Andrea. I just want to welcome you to my session, which is called The Power of Prayer and worship. Um, I am so excited to be leading this because as a person that serves on um, Epic Praise and Worship, I do know a lot about this topic and as, as well as being a part of our student-led prayer calls. For a long time, I'm really accustomed with this and I'm really passionate about it. So I just want to give you guys a few tips 
to kind of help you learn how to worship, learn just different things about prayer, how important it is, just, you know, emphasizing that. I'm pretty sure y'all all all know how important it is, but I just kind of want to reinforce that. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing about prayer and worship that I want to tell you is it's not as hard as you make it. Don't force it. (laughs) Because a lot of times we see people in church and we, we go about our day and as a teen we can be like, yeah, let's Let's act like them. Let's do it like them. Or we only know things because we see them. But sometimes you have to learn yourself and learn that you can worship in any way. You're not going to worship like somebody else might. And that is okay. You're not meant to be like everybody else with your worship. Also, another thing I want to tell you. Worship is a key cornerstone because it involves your faith. Faith is super important to being a Christian, but also trusting in God, because it says, through the good times, through the bad times, I'm depending on God and God alone, and no matter what, God's going to help me through my situation. And even if you do get doubtful, worship can help you through that, and so can prayer. Also, you want to guard your heart. Um, I have a couple of scriptures that I want to read to you from Proverbs. The first one is Proverbs 3 and 5, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. With worship, your heart posture is important. Your heart is important. You don't want to come into worship with a weird posture because you'll feel it and God will feel it. You can't fully worship. Sometimes you feel restricted. Sometimes you can feel like a little stiff. Sometimes days are not going to be good and God will want you to worship. And sometimes that worship will get you to your next point but if you restrict yourself it kind of just defeats the purpose and then also you won't feel filled you'll feel kind of still upset still stressed still confused as to what's going on and so you won't be able to move forward with your day and I'm not saying it'll completely block you but it's very important to worship with a purity and a sense of knowing that God is going to come through even when the day hasn't been great. Um, Then the second scripture that I wanted to read to you guys was Proverbs 4 and 23. And it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So sometimes that attitude is wrong because you're not guarding your heart. You're not, you're not trying to learn about your heart. Your heart is very important in this. Your heart is very important because If you're not watching your heart, even with, like, different things you do, I know you guys that are teenagers are dating now. You're just getting into dating. The reason why adults sometimes warn us and be like, hey, you know, don't don't just be dating anybody is because your heart can get broken. And when your heart gets broken, a lot of times instead of blaming the source, we have a tendency to blame other people or, or blame God for us not doing right on our part. So I think it's very important that you guard your heart. And if your heart is broken, ask God to fix it. I mean, there's nothing that you can't ask of God. You can ask anything. If you're angry, you can ask God to relieve you from your anger. That's something that's very important in prayer. You want to ask God for things that you need. Don't just say it because it sounds good. Don't think that just because you're upset, you can't come to God because any posture is okay. God would rather you come to him then you just go about it randomly and kind of just feel through your own emotions. Because then at that point, you're leaning on your understanding, which clearly in the scriptures it tells us not to do. Then also, don't expect God to show up in the same way when you worship or you pray. When you worship or you pray, God might show you something different. God might, like, reveal something to you that's different. One day God might show up in this way. The next day he might show up in this way. And it's just your responsibility to truly trust in God and wait on him. And sometimes when God shows up in a new way, it makes us uncomfortable. Sometimes we're so used to God being around us or God doing this, like God talking to us loudly. Or sometimes we're used to God showing up when, uh, whenever we worship or not when we praise. Sometimes we're used to God showing up more heavily when we pray. Um, sometimes we're used to God showing up when we speak in tongues. But God is always new. If he's making all things new, he's going to bring something different 
as well. And if times are changing, God won't, God will remain the same, but he'll change his methods. Because I think sometimes as people, we can get bored and we get used to it. So then we get comfortable. And so God wants you to be on your toes at all times because there's an importance to following God. So I have a scripture from Isaiah and it's Isaiah 43 and 19. And it says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And by that scripture, sometimes when things change, you're about to go to something new. So it's always important that you're in prayer, that you're in worship, that you're, you're having your heart prepared. Not only that, but you're also seeking God enough to where you kind of, you can tell a shift is happening, that you're familiar with the shift, that you, you kind of, not that you are trying to take control of the shift, but you know it's happening, you just don't know how, but that's where the faith kicks in. And that's why prayer and worship is really important because when you pray and you worship, you get answers for things. Sometimes you get, you might not get the full answer, you might just get strategy on how to handle something. And then once you do that and you're obedient, you might get the next step. But because it requires faith, I think a lot of times you need to pray over things and you just need to really consecrate yourself. And worship is so important because I feel like it always keeps us humble in general. Um, I feel like a lot of times when we aren't praying or we, we're not in a place where we feel like we need to worship. So like everything's good. Everything's fine. Sometimes I feel like we get comfortable and we don't really have a sense of, oh, I need to pray today. Sometimes it doesn't seem like much of an urgency because we have, we have no willpower or desire to really depend on God. But it's those tougher moments that we really start to look at life and we go, okay, well, I need to trust God because this is all, like all I got, you know. And if it's a tougher moment in a tougher situation, God is the source. God is the source of everything. God is the source of peace. God is the source of joy. God is the source of love. And so when you are relying on God, I think you'll see a difference. Not Sometimes when you rely on God, the situation might not change, but your outlook on it might change. And that's why prayer and worship is super duper important. And I just want you guys to really know that God has not forgotten about you. God hasn't forgot about you. He has his mind on you. But it's just about if you open yourself up for the lines of communication, because a lot of times we feel like God forgot about us or God left us here or God left us there. But no, God knows about us. But if you haven't been communicating with him through those things, through worship, through reading your Bible, through prayer, through consecration, then a lot of times it can feel like he has. But he hasn't forgot about you. He hasn't stopped thinking about you. He's always had his his eye and his hand over you. You just have to really consecrate yourself and pray and fast and do whatever and just be obedient to the moment. Don't restrict yourself. Don't overthink it. Just go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. It might feel uncomfortable if it's different for you. It might, sometimes you don't feel like it, but it's important to do it because it'll make a change in your life and it'll ultimately impact your future. And I just want you guys to know also that no matter where you are, God can save you, but it takes, it takes steps. It takes you opening up. Uh, back to the heart. The heart is very important. So sometimes it's not even us, it's not even that we're guarding our heart the right way. Sometimes we're guarding it too much. We're guarding it from the wrong people. So it's important that you open up your heart, you let God in, you let him do what he needs to do, and you let him have his way because sometimes his way is better than our own way. All the time, actually. So just let God into your heart. Come with a pure posture. Open up your heart. Check your heart. And if it's not in the right place, ask him to fix it. Come to him purely and make sure that you're not looking for God to do the same thing because he's always coming up with new ways to reach you. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into my session. I really hope that you got some nuggets, even though it wasn't super long and it wasn't super wordy. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoyed this. And I hope that some of you will look at God differently 
during this time or any of the sessions that you you watch. I hope that God is reaching you and impacting you in a new way and you're able to actually feel it and you're able to actually feel his love. So I just want to thank you guys again for joining my session and I hope you have a wonderful day and an even better week. Peace. That was fire, bro. It's yeah. like this whole thing, it's pretty good. Yeah, it Not all just lie. came together. Good. Those little puzzle pieces came to do a big, beautiful picture of Yes, sir. Being into the marvelous light. And yeah. that's what we hope y'all got from this. Um, ways to come into the marvelous light. Ways to let your light shine yep. a little brighter. Um, not to dim it down. Be who you're called to be, whether that's a creative, um, whether you're you're called to do praise and worship, whether you're a student athlete, or if you're called to be a student leader, or if there's another thing that you're called to by God, be that. Be authentically you and just walk into the marvelous light. Um, so we really do hope that y'all are blessed by Big Jesus' experience. Yeah, I really do. I yeah. hope you're blessed. This is dope. This is fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like we said yesterday, we don't want to let another moment pass without bringing you into the marvelous life. Yes. So repeat this prayer with me. If you never said this before, don't leave this without saying it. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you, I thank you for dying on the cross for, for me, dying on the cross for me that, I may have that I may have everlasting life, everlasting life with, you. with you. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. So you repeat you, that. Yeah. Believe it in your heart. Mm -hmm. You win. You're in. For life. For life. You're in it for life. For life. For life. So y'all, on behalf of Bishop Herbert Bailey and Dr. Marsha Bailey, and on behalf of the greatest pastor in the world, yes, sir. Pastor Chandler and uh, Miss Audrea, y'all, we thank y'all so much from the bottom of our hearts and bottom of their hearts for tuning in. We hope BJE has been dope, dope, impactful, impactful, life changing, all the good adjectives that we need to sprinkle here. A blast. A blast. <laughs> yeah. So. Stay tuned, y'all. If you haven't already, you can follow us on social media on IG at the RDCI Epic. And on Facebook at the Epic Student Ministries. Yes, and you're already here, so go ahead and subscribe Click to that. Epic Student Ministries, y'all. Be blessed. Be blessed. <laughs> that wraps up our day two of our Big Jesus experience, man. I feel like this went by so fast, but we learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot, you learned a lot, we, we learned a lot. So I'm saying, share it with your friends for future references. And if you ever want to come back, it'll be on our YouTube, Epic Student Ministries. It'll be there. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Love you. Catch you on the flip.